Hi, this is Personal Tutor, and today we will learn about boot process, boot process in Solaris 11. So you know Solaris 11 can go in both Spark and x86 architecture. So we would check both Spark and x86. So the main difference between Spark and x86 boot process is the grub and the open boot PROM. The Spark has um, OBP and x86 boxes have grub, um, which is at the time of boot. So we ha we have to check both. Um, so you can go online and search the images for uh, boot process. You will get flowcharts and steps. So what I want to tell you is a little bit of how does it work. So um, let's first check on uh, Spark box. Um, how does that work? You know, Spark has OBP chip on its motherboard, Open Boot PROM. So that's kind of BIOS in your Intel boxes. The same way Spark has this OBP. So when the system you turn on the system, either from service processor or with the power button, the first thing it runs is POST. Post, um, let me write it down here so that we know. Um, let's open a file, boot process. Okay, the first step I'm talking about, let's give it a title. Um, boot process. And first step is Spark. First, we are talking about post. So post is power on self test. Okay. So what happens is uh, when you start on your system, it runs a power on self test. So it it um, in power on self power on self test, it uh, diagnoses all the hardware that's connected to it and checks whether everything's fine. If it find a fault, it will stop right there. If it doesn't. Uh, it will keep booting and it will check all the hardware attached be it the disks or the cards or um, any other devices so it checks everything and then when everything is um, fine it just um, says okay all all good and then goes to the next step but one more thing um, we should know here is there's one thing called extended post so in case you enable that extended post or you replace a motherboard or a major part, that time it runs extended post. Extended post, uh, it extensively check all the hardware. Like um, in regular post, it will just go and ping, okay, our drive is fine. But in extended post, it will go in, check everything in detail. So usually say your post runs for two to three minutes extended post will run um, it could go from 20 minutes to an hour depending on how big your box is say you have an m5000 with multiple domains it could even take more than an hour to check all the domains um, with extended post okay so that was post and then that then you know after the post we would we would come to um, in in the next video I'll show you all the OK prompt commands so there is a command in OK prompt um, or a variable in OK prompt called boot device so after running the post um, it checks what's the boot device whether it, it has to boot from network or it has to boot from the disk usually it's the first hard drive we boot from so that um, variable boot device store where to boot from so it checks that boot device. So after it gets the um, boot, boot device, it goes to bootloader phase, the second one. Bootloader phase. So when it gets the hard drive which it needs to boot from, the first block of the hard drive is the boot block. So it loads that boot block into the memory. Mm. It's, it's the boot block that usually boots uh, everything, you know, um, all the OS, usually boot blocks remains the same. 
after the boot block is loaded, um, the third phase is is boot phase. Boot phase. So in boot in boot phase, um, it gets the ZFS data set um, because you know it's less eleven. Um, runs on ZFS it's not UFS anymore so the ZFS data set it just get that um, ZFS data set and load into the memory during this phase it um, loads ZFS and it's kind of mini root in Flutter's 10 UFS this ZFS data set uh, loads in and that after loading that it goes to the fourth phase which is RAM disk phase okay so the on the spark systems um, this RAM disk open the disk image and tries to load it in memory because you know now uh, before the kernel could be loaded there has to be sorry let me explain try to explain it um, a little more in detail so the RAM disk extract the kernel image from boot archive and executes it the boot archive contains a file system image that is mounted using in-memory disk and the file system reader mounts it and open the RAM disk image so the RAM disk extracts the kernel image from boot archive you know the boot archive has all the boot information and all the other data and then um, the RAM disk extract the kernel image and then executes it so that way the base kernel is loaded and then the next phase kernel phase the whole Solaris is initialized so that comes to the next um, phase kernel phase so in this phase Solaris is initialized and the minimum root file system is mounted slash root is at this, this time mounted and it remains mounted the other file system var and blah 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 all those file systems are not mounted yet only the root file system at this point and as the root is mounted and Solaris um, mini root is loaded that that comes to the sixth phase which is init phase So in in init phase, the init process is started, which is uh, located in sbin init, and that the process number one. Uh, if you run ps-ef on process init, so that's process number one. So init process is started. When it starts, it reads a file. Um, let's see init tab. So this file started. And um, like in Solaris 10, this init tab then starts svc.startd uh, starts svc.startd. svc.startd is a daemon for SVC, the SMF, Solaris Management Facility. All the services starts with this daemon. Um, you know, once this is started, it it keeps uh, starting other services. So, and definitely this when this starts, everything Solaris is up. So the last phase is the starting all the services. It's called SVC dot start D phase. Start D phase. So as SVC dot start D is loaded, it. Uh, checks and mounts all the file system, configure all the network devices, initiate various processes that are um, set up in the startup files. And if there are some legacy control scripts, RC scripts in hcrc one rc 2d rc 3d it run those scripts. And then once that, that is all done, um, Solaris is up. So that was the boot process. <laughs> So this was uh, for Spark systems. If I come to um, 
So on x86 systems, it's a little different than Spark. Um, how it work, how it goes is the first um, is you know we have all worked on x86 boxes for our Windows desktops. First is BIOS, BIOS phase. So BIOS is your basic input output system. It initializes the CPU and memory. It initializes all the hardware, checks all the hardware, then BIOS loads uh, the Grub Grand Unified Bootloader. Um, so that Grub is loaded, um, and Grub loads the boot device, which is second phase Grub phase. So this Grub, let me write it down: Grand Unified Bootloader. So this this grub loads the boot archive into the memory it display you menus uh, for the boot entries you could make as many entries like for single user mode or multiple boot environments or uh, booting from multiple disks then that menu you could select and usually one default selection is already made if you don't act on it for a few seconds it will just take you to that default boot um, entry and usually it's the first disk and regular multi multi user boot thing so after this grub phase grand unified bootloader um, the the third phase um, is kernel phase because this grub loads the kernel and kernel phase and for all these uh, other init and XVC are exactly same, no difference. Init phase, XVC dot start D phase. Okay, so that was booting process in both um, Spark and x86. Um, I did not know the audience. I did not know what you know and what you don't know. Just leave me a comment, and if you are confused, I could explain it a little better. Um, if you want me to make a video on a different subject, just uh, shoot me a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.